Today's guest is a true fan of good old-fashioned rock. His band Follow No One won Best Rock Act at the 2019 Josie Music Awards, the world's largest indie music awards. The band features Portuguese wild-ass guitarist Pedro Marino Almeida and guest Rich Hall, singer, songwriter, and keyboard man on the Better Each Day podcast radio show. Radio show with Bruce Hilliard today and every day, reaching out for innovative ideas in every way. Today's show is brought to you by your future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. Where did you meet Pedro? I met Pedro actually. I was in Kansas City mm-hmm. and I was recording a solo album. And during the course of the uh, project, um, the engineer took off with the music. He he had a falling out with the studio, and he liked the music, I guess, well enough. He was also producing it, and he just disappeared. So I had some legal wranglings with the studio there. And during that time period, uh, I Pedro contacted me. He found me online uh, on a website, of all things, and uh, emailed me and told me that he was a uh, composer and a guitar player from Portugal, and want to know if I'd be interested in writing uh, some uh, lyrics and vocals for a song that he had been doing. And it was Guardian Angel was the name of the song. It ended up being our first single. And uh, I don't know, we we did that song, and a few people heard it. We actually were just doing it for sync, which is, you know, for, like, television or movies. And uh, we weren't going to release it commercially, but I decided to do it anyway and just see what kind of feedback we got. It was positive enough. We kept going, and here we are still. So he contacted your website, your own personal Rich Hall website. No, it wasn't my website. It was like it's one of those. There, there's a gazillion of them out there. You know, networking type sites now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, this was for you know people actually. It was an odd one for us, but it's people actually uh, that were actors and uh, those types. And I'm not sure why Pedro went that route because I've done some acting as well. But and that's not, but that's not my my forte for um and pedro contacted me that's a site called star now and he, he contacted me and away we go it's, it's interesting i've spoken with a few people that met via newspaper ads and like heart for instance was put together via yeah uh, the internet allows us to do the same thing except halfway around the world now so it's really cool yeah and from portugal of all places yeah i've never met anyone from portugal never been there i've been overseas quite a bit but not not to Portugal, and uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty surprising. And but all I had to do was hear him play, and the first time I did, I'm like, yeah, this guy's all right. Oh man, he's incredible. Did you wonder oh, how th- does this guy speak English very well? Did you wonder that because his guitar playing well, he, is uh, it transcends languages? So, well, you know, the way he plays guitar, he doesn't need to be able to speak English or <laughs> Portuguese for that. Yeah. I told people, you know what, uh, his second, his. Uh, they ask about English. English is his second language. He speaks pretty well, but I say his first language isn't even Portuguese. It's guitar. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it when I heard it. I thought, well, how come I haven't heard of these guys yet? And you just wanted to – tell me about the award. I'm curious about yeah, that. Yeah, man. Oh, cool. Yeah, we, we were nominated for uh, Best Rock Act uh, for 2019, also uh, for the song uh, Your Time of Dying and also Entertainer of the Year. And we were fortunate enough to walk away with uh, with the Best Rock Act of 2019. And this award show, it's called the JMAs. It's Nashville-based. The uh, the actual ceremony was at Dollywood. They they have an agreement with them now to have it there in perpetuity, I suppose. And um, that was it, it's the largest independent music award show in the world. There's people from New Zealand and Sweden all all over the world at that award show, and we we're up against some stiff competition and. I was very, very pleased that we were fortunate enough to uh, walk away with a win there. That's interesting. It almost seems that music is kind of ahead of the game and globalization in a lot of ways. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, it's so funny. Used to bands, that was kind of the mark of a band in the United States, you know, they would, or vice versa. But for the, coming from our standpoint, the United States, you know, you got big enough and you went on a world tour and, you know, 
in those things, that was a sign of your success. Well, now any artist can release their music worldwide, you know, their, their first go. So th- that's changed music. It's interesting. I want to see where it goes. Yeah, it's a, it's good on one hand because pretty much anyone with a with a good song and a good recording can get out there. But it's just a huge, vast ocean, as you well know. Well, it's oh tough. yeah, I mean, get you know, uh, even I, I, you know, radio is very competitive now, and just the industry in itself, just because I guess of the supply of all the music and you know the demand really doesn't change. But we do have a lot more music. You know, I, I think they said. 40,000 new songs uh, are released on Spotify every single day. So that being said, you know, you have to, as an artist now, you have to really, you have to work it. You you have to do a lot of uh, promotional things. And there's a lot of artists uh, that are out there that are just clamoring for attention. You know, I'm very fortunate enough to be speaking with you today. I'm sure there's there's 10 artists that would give their left arm to be talking to you right now. So I'm very, very thankful. I'm flattered. Thank you very much. Tell me about uh, Bring Me Peace. How did that come about? Well, Bring Me Peace, that's that's really, uh, that's that's a Pedro, uh, really a work of Pedro's in this case. Um, Bring Me Peace was something that Pedro had composed, and it has a little bit more of a, a cla- Pedro's guitar style, and his, sometimes his writing style and mine as well, um, lend themselves over to the classical um, edge of things. And you, you've heard some people like... Uh, Ying Bay and some other people like to do that in rock and roll before, but uh, Bring Me yeah. Peace is kind of it's got some of those classical stylings in it, but it, it also has some pretty big vocals in the chorus, and uh, that song it, it was kind of interesting. Pedro just had written the music and and, and and sent it to me, and I took a listen to it, and uh, it, it's hard. Every song starts out a little bit differently, and quite honestly, a lot of times it's just the way that I you know, interpret them when I first, just on first glance or first listen, whatever feeling I get from it, that's what comes out and what ends up. And that's really, I think that song, the music and lyrics and everything really work well together. And the melodies work very well with the guitars in some certain spots. But hopefully that does, that song does kind of give you an exhilarating, peaceful feeling when you listen to it.
completely awesome. I was blown away. Right. And uh, what you describe is sort of everybody kind of has a different way of writing. The writing process kind of depends on anything. But I, I, when you sit down and write, do you find that your best ideas have come quickly? And then after a while, you're just kind of chipping away at it? Or is it just all come magically from a big hand down there from heaven or something like that? Well, sometimes it is that big. I mean, like I, I, I like to say, all, all good things, you know, come from God, I believe. And uh, some of the best songs I, I, I've written, it's, it's just what you said. It's just almost like, you know, I got the first note and, and man, everything just comes right together. And that makes that can make for it can make for a great song. And that's the way it happens sometimes, but it's really the process of writing and, and all that. It, it varies with the song for us anyway. Um, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, sometimes the lyrics come first. Uh, sometimes, you know, you just get a melody in your head. And sometimes, like you spoke to a moment ago, you just kind of start out. It's kind of like the old stories you heard, the stairway to heaven, um, that it just seemed like the guitar was playing itself. And I know some of those are a little bit melodramatic and but there's some truth there's some truth to that but even the even yeah. the easiest song to write to make it to take it from a good song to a great song you still have to go back and work it rework it and just listen to it over and over again and uh you just kind of chip away at it and just put and just continue to polish it you know i would say from start to end we'll end up anywhere from 120 to maybe 200 hours on a single song and that sounds like a lot. And a lot of artists don't do it that way because of technology and what's going on now. But we're old school in our approach when it comes to that. And hopefully it shows in the final product. Yeah, it, it does. You don't sound real digitized. It doesn't sound like uh, EDM type music at all. No, no. We like, we, like, we like the good old fashioned instruments, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, not to take away from anybody that does it. You know, I love the synth stuff oh, as yeah. well. But yeah. for rock and roll, you know, we try to stay true to the uh, – you know, analog as much as we possibly can. And there's some things that digital brings to the, to the, to the uh, table that's, that's as good as well. You know, nowadays you can, you can have a pretty good uh, string section, for example, that sounds almost as good as what you could get. Not quite as good, but you know, to the listener, you very, very negligible in noticing the difference. And those are some of the things that technology and, and some of these things. And quite honestly, with Pedro's background in, uh, a composition and classical music and such that adds you know a layer to us that allows us to add some of those types of uh, um, elements to our music and I think it works well for us. So you have Pedro on guitar, you on keyboards, largely, right? Yeah, I play keyboards and uh, handle most of most of the vocals and uh, guitar. Like Greatest Sin is a is a song we did, for example. Um, I don't play the guitar on on the track, but the original the way it started, I, I started writing it on guitar and just recorded a demo of the song, basically shot it over to Pedro mm. and he listens to it. And then I, I say, I call it the Pedro machine. Then he throws it to the <laughs> Pedro machine. And then what comes out on the end after the fact is <laughs> never anything exactly like what I started out with, but it's always much better. <laughs> much yeah. better. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing to have. That's a luxury. That's better than a nice car. You know that? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Where did you get your start? What were your influences? Well, um, Early, early on, I, I, my, I would say my start would be my dad's record collection. Uh, my dad, uh, he's, he was a big rock and roll guy, for, you know, for back in the day. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be exposed to some pretty great music like, you know, Grand Funk Railroad, Sabbath, uh, Hendrix, Blind Faith. I could just go on and on with the artist Bob Seger, just, just great, great artists. And we take, t- took it for, uh, took him for granted then. And, you know, you just don't. You know, I don't know that there's been another time like there was then where you had such a collection of talent that was just so amazing that people are still drawing from today. And, you know, that got me interested in music. And then from then on, I I just decided to start learning piano on my own. And uh, and I got my first rock band when I was in 13 playing keyboards. When I was 13 playing keyboards. And uh, I loved it. And I just, you know, been doing it ever since. And just took it, you know, in some different directions. Got got some some formal training for some people um, vocally and also on the piano end of things. But uh, rock and roll is what you know I've always really loved. So do you learn a lot just from observing other people or playing in other bands and just kind of self-taught? Them? No, you know, not really so much from other people. 
Um, yeah, pretty much self-taught. And, and I was fortunate enough to be the first the, the, the first musical act I was in. Um, the the guy that was he was just, I was actually just a freshman in high school. He was a senior, and the guy went on to be a doctor, and he's an electrical engineer now. But he was a great guitar player too. So I've I've been fortunate in my life to to be matched with great guitarists. But he also had a great head on his shoulders and kept me out of a lot of trouble. You know, back when I could have been, you know, that that oh, yeah. age and everything, and kept me in the right direction. And and with that with that guy, we I, I recorded my first album in Kansas City when I was sixteen, and then followed up another one with him and then we we had a little chance to do something ourselves but he he chose to choose the uh you know more responsible route and he plus he put a lot of work into his degree and i i think four or five books later i think he's on uh, i think he probably feels like he makes the right choice made the right choice but i still hear from him actually his name is ray Bar- dr ray barnett i still hear from him just about after every single we release and he gives me a little critique on it and for the most part it's all positive he, he loves pedro's guitar playing as well so who doesn't? That's so great. Right. So you're you're the vocalist, main vocalist. Yeah. You do them all. Yeah, I, I, uh, I write I write all the lyrics for, for the most part and I'll handle all the vocals. Yeah, and except for you know this uh, "Fear No Evil," which is one of our newest tracks. I actually brought in mm. someone else to play uh, Reagan Hall, who's actually my son. Uh, played uh, bass on that on that track and also provided uh, some backing vocals. He hit some of the high parts for me, so I didn't have to go. So, <laughs> there, one of the, one of the signature uh, signature parts of the song is just a very, uh, I guess, if you want to call it a very Beatlesque esque uh, type of harmony at the very end. And uh, and he gave me an idea. He gave me the idea for putting it together that way. And uh, so I said, well, if you got the idea, why don't you why don't you sing one of the parts on it?
So you did bring, yeah. he did bring that in, and on Bring Me Peace, you'll hear a combination of, of, of myself. Pedro actually uh, contributes quite a bit on the vocals in this one, adding backups, and then he kind of brings the song home through the end, and that's Pedro singing there. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're, our, our style's uh, slowly coming together to what I had envisioned it to be the whole time. And uh, that's just, you know, some of the classic bands of all time that I used to love to hear were the ones, you know, the uh, the uh, Def Leppards, the in, in rock and roll anyway, Kansas and some of those mm-hmm. types of people, Damn Yankees, where you just heard great, great, great vocal uh, parts in their songs. And, and yeah, they just yeah. really stood out. Sticks is another example. Sticks, those, I was going to Sticks after Damn yeah, Yankees. You got, yeah, right, you got right. And Night Ranger, you know where I'm at then. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love that in rock and roll, and you don't hear that so much anymore, and I think it's a shame. And so I, I've tried to focus on that in some of our music, and I have on the last couple of singles, and, I, and, and actually last three. And uh, I think uh, the fans are really digging that, and that'll probably be kind of a signature of ours, hopefully, to stay. Yeah, well, I think one of the reasons you don't hear it very much is it's hard to do. Oh, very, yeah, very difficult, especially it's hard... <laughs> It's hard yeah. to pull it off. It's hard to pull it off live, and for me, you know, we're talking about bands earlier. Um, if, for the proper fit for a band I'm in, I, you know, I, as a vocalist, I, I don't feel threatened at all by other people singing. In fact, I think it's a good thing, and I want, uh, I, I prefer to have everybody in the band to be able to, you know, sing not as well as I do. I don't expect that, but you know, to add their own style and, and uh, their own vocal capabilities to, to uh, contribute to the overall sound of what we got going on. So we mentioned Fear No Evil. Did you write that? Uh, yes. Yep. That was, uh, that was an interesting one. I actually, uh, I've been interested in, uh, in uh, demonic possession and exorcism for, for many, many years. And uh, mm. I don't know. So one day I was just sitting down here. I, I started to write a song about it, but it was just kind of like a throwaway. I, I wrote the chorus and the fear, no evil part. And, uh, I just sat it down, didn't think about it. And then Pedro had, had sent me the, the opening to this song. And then I was like, I was in my studio listening to it. And I saw a piece of cardboard with fear, no evil written on it and walked over to it, looked at it there. <laughs> I said, huh, that sounds pretty cool. And then boom, from there, we started with the chorus and then kind of worked our way back around and wrote the rest of the song. Which you know it doesn't necessarily deal on those topics per se real real heavily, but uh, it, it got me in the right direction to write that song. Yeah, that's funny. You span from "Bring Me Peace" to "Demonic Possession." That's well, actually, "Bring Me Peace" like... comes after, which kind of makes sense. We didn't plan it that way, and actually, we had <laughs> yeah, okay. we'd already recorded "Bring Me Peace," and we're set, we're going to oh. release that. And I was like, well, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, learn how to conquer evil, and then I, and then we'll bring some peace after that because we'll need it. <laughs> that's a good a good spectrum no I, i'm all about that i always say you don't have to be a villain to write about a villain no no dio was so. great at that too you know writing about <laughs> the different aspects of just spiritualism and life and things and that's something that interests me in my daily life so it comes over into yeah. the music sometimes so do you have a tour planned what are you guys doing well, 2020 is kind of wide open right now uh we've we've been spending a lot of time in the studio in 2019 and uh after the first of the year, we're we're gonna just basically uh, formulate a game plan for next summer, and that that would probably be when when some touring may occur, or it may occur so- sooner than that. It just depends if we get the right if somebody somebody calls us and we get the right opportunity, we're not gonna turn it down. If I get a call from Ms. Mr. Coverdale's manager saying, "Hey, you know, White Snake really needs you guys to open for him." Um, I'm going to probably uh, say, okay, well, I'm getting dressed. What time do you need me to be there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me think about it a second. Okay. Sure. But, yeah, I, I, I'm always interested to see uh, what kind of where's your show, what kind of feedback we get from these shows. Where's your show located? It's international, so I, I have people in Vietnam, France. Awesome. That, that's actually cool you said that because Vietnam has been popping up in my our analytics, on SoundCloud anyway. It's the, Ho, Chi, Ho Chi Minh yeah. City is our top streaming city in, on SoundCloud. Uh, Why the is that? <laughs> I have no idea, and there's no way to find out That's how they, me. you know, I don't even know how they found us. So, you know, shout That's out to me. everyone in Ho Chi Minh City. I would, if I'd have known that, I would have said that. Yeah, how are you, how are you guys doing yeah, over no there? Kidding. Yeah, and I, I'm, 
I wonder, well, do you speak English? Because, uh, you yeah. know, but apparently. I, I thought 206, and I used to live up in Portland, so I, I recognize that area code. So You lived in Portland. Yeah. I just came from Portland two days ago. I went to a wedding oh, there. And, yeah, a long time ago, man. Back back 1991, 92, 93, something like that. Yeah, and uh, and the bumper stickers said, keep Portland, Portland weird, and it's still pretty weird. No, so. they, they, they've succeeded at that, that's for sure. <laughs> I like Portland, man. I just the reason I got I, I, I did too. I just couldn't take the win, the uh, winters and the rain. When the rains, it's just not me. I like sunshine, and that's why I'm in Colorado now. We got where I'm at, at least. I get tons of sun. I, I lived there too. I lived in Aurora for. Oh, a while. okay. Yeah, right. I'm I'm down in uh, Pueblo. Well, well, that's cool. You have a bit of an accent. Where are you from originally? Um, actually, I'm fr- I, I I sound like a hillbilly, and I'm originally from Detroit. I just I've lived a lot of different places, and I lived down in Kentucky. For quite a while, so when I lived down there, I learned to talk like them, so they didn't, so they would, tr- so they would trust me because if you sound like a Yankee there, uh, nobody oh, yeah. trusts you, you know. So, <laughs> no kidding, that's Jeez. true. That's true. I, I did. I really, literally changed the way I spoke and kind of stuck with me. I like talk, not talking so fast. Well, it's cool. I like it. Well, right. I could chat with you yeah. all day, but I'm gonna let you run. So. All right. Thanks for your time. Have, have a good. All right. Take care. Radio Show with Bruce Hilliard. We'll be back with a new horizon, but until then, honor the future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. And we're all just trying to make the next day a bit better. <laughs> <laughs>